there, Hillary here from Old World Home. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna take you along with me as we bake a pumpkin pie completely from scratch. We're gonna take a decorative pumpkin that I have used all month long to decorate our kitchen and actually roast it down and use that pumpkin puree to make a delicious, the best pumpkin pie you'll ever have, in my opinion. This is the pumpkin pie that my parents have always made, and I made it with them last year for the first time, and now this is my first time making it completely by myself in my own kitchen, and I'm gonna take you along with me. There is no need to be intimidated by cooking your own pumpkin and making your own pumpkin puree. It is actually incredibly easy. So all you need to do is take a pumpkin. So the one that I have is was a green fleshed pumpkin or a squash if you wanna call it that. You can use those squatter like cheese pumpkins, Cinderella pumpkins, or even the orange ones like the jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. You can pretty much use anything for this recipe. You really only need a small one because you only need about two cups of pumpkin puree. My large pumpkin that I cooked gave me a ton of pumpkin, so I'm going to make two pies today. Pop it in the oven at about 375 for anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes, up to an hour or two hours, depending on how large it is. You can also slice it open, which is what I did, to scoop out the seeds and just break it up a little bit so that it would roast a little faster. But if you have just a smaller pumpkin or even a dish that can hold a large pumpkin, you can go ahead and put it in whole. So I definitely suggest you do this either early in the morning and bake your pie later or do the pumpkin prep one day and then use the flesh a little bit later when you're ready to bake your pumpkin because it does need to cool down so that you can peel off the skin. And if yours is particularly wet, you can let it drain over a mesh colander or just a regular colander, just get a little bit of that excess moisture out, and that's it. Once the pumpkin is roasted and drained, you can go ahead and scoop it out and use it just that way, or you can puree it in a food processor or a blender just to get it silky smooth, but I actually like a little bit of that rustic texture, so that is just up to you. All right, so now that our pumpkin is prepped and ready to be used, we're gonna start by making the crust first. So you're gonna use just a regular pie, plate or you can use a disposable pie tin that's what I'm gonna do with my second pie and then some sort of food processor this is like a little ninja blending system I'm gonna use this and everything gets put right in here it's incredibly easy it is a nut crust so it's not a you know it does have flour and butter but it's not like the flaky pie crust like that it's a little bit more rustic if you will and it's so so good with the pumpkin pie so it's one and one fourth cup of flour. I'm going to put that right into the mixer or the food processor. You could probably even do this by hand if you didn't have any kind of um, food processor. The blender might be a little tough because it might not have the space and there's really not a lot of liquid to move it around. So if you don't have a food processor, then you could do it by hand. All right, and then you need a half of a cup of nuts. I'm going to use pecans for this recipe, pecans, however you say it. Um, you can use really any nut. You could do walnut, you could do a mix of nuts, whatever you have on hand, really. So a half cup of that, and I just put them in whole because the blender part is gonna mix it up for me and you know break it all down. And then you need a third of a cup of packed brown sugar and then a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and baking soda. I'm gonna kind of break that up in there and then kind of sprinkle the dry things around. And then a half of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Just right in there. So I'm gonna pop on the lid and I'm gonna pulse that all together so that it gets all ground up. And it doesn't have to be super fine like a meal. You want it to have a little bit of a texture to it because we are also going to add in the butter and that's gonna continue to pulse in with it and then really bind the crust together. Now I'm going to cut in a half cup of butter, which is one stick of butter. I'm gonna cut this up into little pieces, not little pieces, but I'm just gonna dice it a little bit. And like I said, this is what is going to bind the crust together. And then that's it. It's all just done in one container, one food processor, and it's really very simple. All right, crust is done, and we're gonna pour it into our pie plate and then kind of press it together with your fingers and it may be kind of 
um, like dry and crumbly. Like it may seem like it's too um, dry, but as you press it together with your fingers, you're gonna really pack it down. And then you wanna kind of build it up the wall of the pie plate. All right, so there's the crust. You can see it was a little bit crumbly at first, but then it really does firm up and the butter really helps to bind everything together. So that's my first one. I'm gonna make a second batch and make a second pie and then we will fill it. All right, so our crusts are done. I have one in a glass and one in a tin that I'm gonna save for another day, but if I'm going through all the effort of doing this, I might as well make two pies out of it. So now I'm gonna move into my mixer, which again, you don't have to do a mixer. You could probably do this by hand. I'm just gonna make it a little bit easier and use my mixer to put together the filling. I should also mention, probably at the beginning, you're gonna preheat your oven to 450. You're gonna start the pies at that temperature and then you're gonna kick it back down. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and preheat your oven and put it on 450. All right, so for the filling, we have a third cup of brown sugar and a third cup of white granulated sugar. It's gonna go in there. And then this recipe calls for three whole eggs. We're gonna crack those in and then get that blended together. All right, now we're gonna put in the pumpkin puree. Like I said, you need two cups of puree. And then we're gonna add the spices. So this here is the key to why this recipe is so delicious and so different than most other pumpkin pie recipes. So this does have cinnamon and ginger in it and salt, but it also calls for clove, cardamom, and allspice. And the key is to use the whole cardamom, allspice, and clove if you can. You can buy them pre-ground and use them fresh that day. The only thing is when you go to make it maybe next year, they're not gonna be as fresh. Those spices don't keep. So either you can buy them pre-ground, you know, at the start of each holiday season and have it as fresh as possible, or just buy them whole and then you can grind them whenever you need them and they will keep much longer in their whole state. So if you had a spice grinder, this is a very easy step. If you don't have a spice grinder like I didn't, I had to hand grind my spices and it did take a little while, but it truly is the difference between maybe a store-bought pumpkin pie or a very mild pumpkin pie to one that is very rich and flavorful. It's not super spicy. It just adds that those notes in the background. You can make this recipe and leave out the cardamom or leave out the allspice if that's something that you don't typically have on hand, but I highly recommend you splurge and add them to this recipe because it really does make a big difference. And then lastly, I have three quarters cup of heavy cream and three quarters cup of half and half. That's gonna go in here as well. And that's pretty much the end of the filling. All right, filling is ready. So we're gonna pour it in to our pie crust. It doesn't go over. Okay, that's good. And then, like I said, I'm gonna make another batch to do my other pie, and then we will pop them in the oven. So I may have overfilled this one just a little bit. I think it's gonna still be okay. I'm gonna bring that one to share with my family tonight. And then this one I'm going to pack up after it's baked and bring to a friend's giving. So I wanted to make it look a little bit nicer and not overflow the crust too much. So like I said, these are now gonna go in the oven at 450 for eight minutes. And then you're gonna kick the heat down to 325 for another 40 to 45 minutes until they're done. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today as we baked a pumpkin pie from scratch. Again, I will have the full recipe linked down below so you can see all of the measurements. And if you make this for your family and friends this holiday season, I hope that it is a blessing. So thank you so much for watching today. If you are new to my channel, be sure to stick around and subscribe. I do try to put out two videos every week about lifestyle, home, thrifting, decor, all sorts of wonderful things. So be sure to stick around and I'll be talking to you soon. Take care guys, bye.